We are. We about to unleash. We about to give the truth to the old school, middle age and youth. We about to unleash. Hey, family and friends, this is your girl Trigger Preacher, and we're going to get right into it. We're going to talk about this community that's called the L, which stands for light, G, which stands for grace. B, which stands for baptism. T, which stands for transformation. And Q, which stands for the quickening of the Holy Spirit. But y'all get what I'm trying to say, right? We want to get right into it from a biblical standpoint. And we want to discuss, is this right? Concerning this community, when it comes to biblical teaching, when it comes to biblical principles, and even when it comes to us serving God, is it right to be a part of this community? Is this acceptable in the kingdom of God? What is the big deal? So let's talk about it. Let's not make it personal. Let's not hate each other, but let's talk about it from the biblical standpoint. Now, the first um, chapter we'll go to is Leviticus. Y'all can open up y'all books. Because let me tell you something. I got papers all over the place. Research papers. I got Bibles all over the place. Because I want to make sure I can translate this thing to you guys. Where you all can understand it and make a better decision. Alright? Moving forward. So let's talk about Leviticus 18.22. And it talks about do not practice homosexuality. Having sex with another man as with a woman. It is a detestable sin. Right? We know sin is sin. This says this is a detestable sin. This is the most yucky, yucky, whatever it is. We don't have to try to interpret that. The Bible tells us it's absolutely wrong to absolutely do this. So because we know this, why we don't have to try to break it down in 20 other languages. It's already self-explanatory, right? Let's go to another particular scripture that talks about this. It's Romans chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. It says, that is why God, watch this, abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulge in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, they burned with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men, and as a result of this sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserve. Let's just stop. Let's breathe. Woo. I got a book out. And, and the first chapter is just breathe. You guys are just breathe through this. Let me say this. The, the, the first thing is a lot of people in that community or really people who advocate for that community. The first thing they'll say is Leviticus. That was Old Testament. That was back then. Well, here we got New Testament and Romans. And he's really it's reiterating what happened back then that God is even more mad about it. Right? I don't like to use the word man like God is mad. No. I don't want to say God is mad. God is more intentional about his word being known that it is sin and it is wrong and it's unacceptable. Let me say that. Now, with that being said, we're going to go to the next particular chapter, verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 10. It says, don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or abusive or cheat people, none of these would inherit the kingdom of God. Now, you may say to yourself, like, golly, that sounds like some of all of us up in there. <laughs> You're absolutely correct. What is the big difference about this particular verse? The big difference is, is that when it comes to justifying some of this action in here, it seems like that community gets justified and nobody else does. And they are considered a part of the group who will not inherit the kingdom of God because of the practices of homosexuality. Now, this is why most of us get saved. Most of us get saved because we read stuff like this and say, oh, yeah, dang, I'm a drunk. Woo, I'm not going to enter into the kingdom of God. How must I be saved? Most of us get into the kingdom of God because we say, hey, you know, I've been abusive. Or a man might say or a woman may say I've been, you know, in domestic violence and I was the one, the abuser. You know what I mean? Oh, I can't get into the kingdom of God. Some may say, you know, I cheat people. I steal money for a living. I, oh, I can't get into the kingdom of God. I'm, I'm greedy. I'm, I'm a thief. I'm a prostitute. I, I, I cheated on my husband or my wife. I'm an adulteress. Oh, I cannot get into the kingdom of God. And then this is where most get saved because they're like, I got to get saved because I want Jesus to wash away my sins. I want the price to already be paid for my sin. However, 
when you take a group out of this particular chapter in this verse and you glorify them and say you are justified and not that God said they were justified the people said they were the government forces said they were justified people start going into agreement with the government and taking a particular group out of this section and said no we're going to back you there's no way you can back these people without backing the ones that are greedy, drunk, abusive. But as you all know, get pulled over, you get the DUI. Become abusive and you get the domestic violence case against you. Cheat on people and then you get those charges for embezzlement. Um, become a thief and you go to steal, you go to you go to jail for stealing, right? A larcenist, right? You all these things happen, sexual sin, all these things. But how come the enemy? took one group of people out of here, put them on a pedestal, and then say, as a government, we endorse this. Something is wrong with this picture. And there has been a lot of people in the light community, okay? In the light community, in the grace community, all right? A lot of people in the Bible community, all right? In the transformation community, in the quickening community, there's a lot of people in that community that has been a victim of the enemy working through government to promote this agenda. And so we know all have come short of the glory of God. All have fallen and come short. But God don't want you to stay there. That's why he gives you a way out. And we're going to get to that way. The next thing I want to talk about is how so many people, how we justify these actions, right? And so they, they justify it. They justify whatever that was done. Um... Listen, God knows, God knows my heart, whatever the case may be. God, I still love God. I can still serve God like this. Sorry, 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 sorry. You are not serving God and staying in that community and serving God and just accepting that you serve God and you press forward and you want God to change and transform you. And he says you are to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So even if you come to God in that particular fashion and from that community, you come to God and you may tell God I'm struggling. And this is where this is where grace kicks in. This is where justification kicks in because now he's working with you to renew your mind, to get that stain off of you and that residue of sin off of you. And so I want to talk about something else that's very important. I wrote that in my notes, right? Misusing grace. Misusing grace. Some think that because they are covered by grace, watch this, they can continue to sin without consequence. But as Romans 6, 1 and two says, it reminds us, shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? And the Bible says, by no means, right? Then it's called selective obedience, right? Watch this. Others pick and choose which parts of the Bible to follow. Ignoring the parts that convict them of sin. This leads to a lifestyle that appears Christian, but harbors unrepentant sin. Let's go with another one. It's called rationalizing sin. Christians may justify sinful behavior by claiming it's necessary or it's insignificant. And a lot of things that is done to justify the way that these things are actually done. So let's get towards what do we do from here? Because let's be honest. I, I, I'm going to stop for a minute and I'm going to say something. I'm going to stop and say this. I was talking to somebody earlier and I was like, you have to know that this is definitely the enemy's agenda. You have to know this because there's a lot of people that's in that community that's confused. They don't know who they are. They don't know what they like. They have one minute they like the other sex, they like the same sex, and they keep going back and forth. It's nothing more than sexual perversion. Listen, most of those people who struggle in that community, like really struggle, that say they were born that way, the reason why they say they struggle, because they was recognizing that they were born in sin. Many of us were born, in, all of us was born in sin. The Bible says we were all shaped in iniquity when we were born. So there was some type of sin curse that was attached to us with, from ancients of years ago that came through the bloodline that all of us coming here with something. Kill, what, what, this Bible, what this word just said, a thief, killing, prostitution, whoremonging, lying. You know what I'm saying? All these things that we come in here with. 
But this is why Jesus specifically said, in order to enter into the kingdom of God, we must what? We must be born again. Because the first birth was the birth that was full of iniquity. That we came in here with all these generational curses on us. But watch this. But when we come to him, when we come to him, this is when we're asking for him to save us from the curses of that generation, to renew us, to baptize us, to transform us, to make us more like him. We ask him to go ahead and allow the price that he paid to cover us for all of the sins that we should have paid the price for, which was death. Because the wages of sin was death. So when I say this, I said this to a friend, I said, listen, I said, how you got men, real men that, that struggles with this community? They like men. They don't like men that look like women. That would be crazy. Think about, think about what's happening. So you got men that's supposed to like men. If he like a man, he likes the structure of a man. He likes everything about the man. He don't want the man to go turn into a girl because that's so counterfeit. I mean, like, why would he want the man to turn into a girl? He can just go get a girl, okay? If you are a woman that just like women, why would you go get a woman look like a man? I mean, how confusing is that to anybody? So, you know it's a trick of the enemy. It's just sexual perversion. It's just sexual perversion in another form of fashion. Most of these people who are claiming to be a part of this community has just been a victim of what the government has agreed to and has allowed because the government who allowed this to happen had a had, this was on the agenda of the enemy. And this is why the Bible says you don't wrestle with flesh and blood. You wrestle with principality, spiritual wickedness, things in high places, okay? This is what you're wrestling with. And y'all remember when Obama had went ahead and approved for the folks to get married, for that community to marry each other? And they turned the White House into a rainbow house, okay? Which we know the rainbow is not about pride. We know it's about the promises of God. And so at the end of the day, you have an opportunity. If you are a part of that community, you have an opportunity right now to repent. You have an opportunity right now to give your life over to Christ because I know you're struggling. I know you're struggling. I know you're struggling deep down in the inside. Well, who am I? I know that you feel hopeless even though you are in this situation. You know why? Because you are not truly living out your divine purpose and your divine calling and something in you feels empty and the more you keep tapping into that community the more you keep tapping into that sexual perversion you are feeling less and less and less like who you were called to be and I know that is you I know that you is watching this and I know you are battling and the Bible says that hope deferred makes a heart grow weary and so you're weary and the Bible says be not weary in well doing so in due season if you faint not you should reap but it's no well doing in there it's no well doing in that community you may be struggling like everybody else has a struggle some have a struggle with gambling some have a struggle with lying prostitution whoremonger drugs and everything but you do not stay there you do not justify your struggles and you do not stay punning in that thing you fight like hell you use the word of God and you pray and you surrender yourself every single day so that God can help change and transform you into the image and the likeness of Christ and who you were called to be more like with that being said let me say this to you I want to tell you I want to give you actually a new meaning I want to give you a new meaning listen I want to share this with you the light the L now represents the life. Watch this. John 8 and 12 says, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Oh my God. Whether you're in that community or you are stuck in a community that is not pleasing to God. Whether it's whoremonger, whether it's the lifestyle of just partying and being drunk and, and just sexual fornications and everything else. He says, watch this. He says, if you follow me, you won't have to walk in that darkness. We serve such an awesome God that says, if you just follow me. Listen, listen, listen at him. Listen at the softness of him saying, if you just follow me, you will not have to walk in that darkness. You know you won't out of that darkness. He says, because you will have the light that leads to life. He says, I am the light. <laughs> I am the light of the world. Listen, he says, Jesus is the light that dispels the darkness of sin, guiding us towards his righteousness. Watch what G stands for. Change that. G stands for grace. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says this. God saved you by his grace when you believe. 
Will you be willing to become a believer today? Will you be will you be willing to surrender? Surrender your own will, your own emotions, your own thoughts, this own evil desire. Will you surrender it? Watch what he says to you. He says, God saved you by his grace when you believe. Will you be a believer? And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Grace is God's unmerited favor that saves us and empowers us to live according to his will. So God said he's imp- his grace empowers us. Some of you all need God's grace, but more importantly, you need to surrender your will to him. And that grace is going to come in use when you struggle, when you want to go back, when you want to keep double dipping and triple dipping. That grace is going to be sufficient to walk with you, to empower you, to do the will that he has for your life. And the next B, the next B is baptism. Baptism. Romans 6, 3 and 4 says this, for we died and we were buried with Christ. Watch this. By baptism. By baptism. That's how you bury your old self with Christ is by baptism. He says, and just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father. Now we also may live new lives. So baptism actually symbolizes dying to sin and being raised to a new life in Christ. The next word is transformation. T for transformation. Romans 12, 2 talks about let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. That is the biggest thing. Transformation renews our mind, allowing us to align our lives with God's will. How can he transform you? By the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? You get in his word. You talk to him daily. You allow the Holy Spirit to teach you and pour into you that inner still voice that sometimes you can't explain that be talking to you. You get more in tune with that inner still voice, which is Holy Spirit. So the Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You cannot be the same individual if you are constantly renewing your mind with the same old stuff that got you in the place that you're in in the first place. You have to be transformed. And let's go with the last one, Q. Q for quickening, for quickening. Ephesians 2, 1 says this. It says, and you have he quickened, and you have he quickened who were dead in your trespasses and sin. So a lot of you you that, that are in this community, the Bible says right now, you are dead in your trespasses and you are dead in them. That means they are controlling your life. You are dead. Sin is controlling your life. The trespass is controlling your life. This community is controlling your life. The government who's endorsing it is controlling your life. Bible says you are dead in your sins and your trespasses, but I want to quicken you because I want to give you life. This is what Jesus says when he says, I want to give you life and give you life more abundantly. You know what he's saying? He's saying apart from him, you are dead. Apart from Christ, you are dead. You are living in this body, but you are literally walking dead because there is no spirit that is allowing you. The Bible says it is the spirit that gives life. It is the spirit that gives us life. Without the spirit, there is no life. And even though it looks like you're living, even though it looks like you're existing, even though it looks like you're thriving and you're having fun and you're partying, you're still dead. You're walking dead because only the spirit can give you life. Only the Spirit can give you life. And he says, as long as you stay in your sin, you are dead. You do not have the opportunity of that life that Christ wants to make sure that you have. And it is that life that Christ gives you that it just flows over into eternity where you never, ever die. You transition out of this body into the presence of our Lord. Watch what he says. He says, but God, watch this, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins. Watch this. Have quickened us together with Christ. Quickening bringeth us from spiritual death to life in Christ. Where is the life? It is in Christ. He says, even though we were dead in our sins, if you are willing to surrender and submit to God, he will quicken you and bring you life through Christ. Christ was the best thing that could have happened to us in this earth realm. So listen, (laughs) I'm saying this to you. We are called to live as the light of Christ. That's what we're called to do. There is a battle that is going on between evil versus good. And somehow, some way, you got to be able to fight what seems to be good. The Bible said it appears to be good. But you have to be careful about the wolves and sheep clothing. I'm going to go ahead and let y'all go because I know this has been long. But listen, this is your day. If it's you, if you have a, a family member, a son, a daughter, a niece, a nephew, whoever. If it's you, cousin, mother, whatever. Listen, I had a mother that pretty much raised me. I called her my mother. She's my auntie, but she died in that. I had an uncle who was pretty much very influential in my life, and he died in that. 
I don't want you guys to die in that. I love them. I wasn't saved. I wish I would have because I would have had a different conversation with them. But I pray somehow, some way that God was still able to intervene even as they were transitioning and be able to get them another opportunity at life with him. That's what I pray. According to the Bible, it says what it says. Those kind of people will not make it into his kingdom. And especially if you have not been renewed and transformed, if you have not surrendered yourself to Christ, if you have not given your life to Christ, there becomes a hopeless individual. And as I explained to my kids before, baby, let me tell you something. You have a body and you have a soul. That's where all your will, mind, and emotions is at. You may say it's your brain. It's up in there. And then you have the spirit man. All right? So at the end of the day, the spirit is going to go back to God. The body is going to go back to the ground. And your soul with all of the will, emotions, thoughts, and everything that is there that's looking like this figure is going to be there. Don't let it be lost when it's time to transition, not knowing which way to go which way to go. So I love you all. Don't let the government, don't let the endorsements of presidents or whoever be able to be your God and tell you what you have the right to do. God has already given you the rights. He's already given you the morals, the principles, the values. He's already given you his word. Don't let nobody else give you another word that contrary to God's word. God says, let every man be a lie and let him be the truth. So if they're not telling the truth because they're not lining up with God, that means they are liars. And the Bible says that nobody is the father of lies but the devil. So who are you following? Either you're going to follow God or you follow, or you're following the father of lies and those who work for him. And that's the devil. Until next time, this is your sister Trigger Preacher, also known as God's Girls. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like. Make sure you join the membership. Make sure you check out all the things that I have going on so you can benefit from all of the tools and all of the knowledge and everything that God is pouring out of me into his people. Until next time, I love you guys, girls. I love you guys, guys. I love you unstoppable women and unstoppable men. I love you all, and you all be blessed. Until next time, God bless. Trigger Preacher, also known as God's Girls. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video everywhere. God's Girls all over the world.